empowering women and eliminating racism, critical issues and powerful social movements. YWCA Greater Cincinnati has been a leader and change agent for more than 150 years. And today a big part of that work has been focused on creating equity across all the YW programs and services. Hi, I'm Christina Guerrero, co-host of The List, which you can catch here on WCPO9. And in list fashion tonight, you will meet eight career women of achievement with stories as diverse as they are unique. You'll be inspired by deserving scholarship recipients who are pursuing their dreams. You'll learn how restorative justice circles are narrowing racial disparities by changing school discipline practices. You'll hear what YWCA is doing to meet the urgent safety needs of survivors of domestic violence. And you'll have more than a few opportunities to support the YWCA's programs and services through Alta Fiber. Text to give. Here is Michelle Hall to tell you more. Thanks, Christina. Alta Fiber, formerly known as Cincinnati Bell, is thrilled to partner with the YWCA Greater Cincinnati. One of our commitments at Alta Fiber is to financially support organizations that empower individuals to create a more equitable society. The YWCA is one of the organizations we passionately support because of the incredibly important work it does to fight inequality, racism, and violence. The YWCA plays an important role in making us a better and stronger community. You can support the YWCA programs and services through Alta Fiber's Text to Give. Just pick up your phone and text to the number 91999 and type in the message equity. Then click the link to fulfill your pledge. We'll be back throughout the program to see how our Text to Give is progressing. A special thanks to our Text to Give sponsor, Alta Fiber. 150 years ago, Cincinnati Bell set out to connect and serve its community. Since then, we've kept at the forefront of innovation. In the spirit of continued innovation, Cincinnati Bell is now Alta Fiber. Although our name is changing, our legacy is not. We'll be spending more than a billion dollars connecting more people and businesses with an elevated commitment to our customers and our communities. Fiber changes everything. It's time we change with it. Equality, is that enough? I've searched every corner of my mind trying to find an answer to this question. Is it enough? For as long as I can remember, the ones who look like me fought for equality. But was that enough? Is it enough when we're both handed a 10-foot ladder to climb out of our holes? But yours only goes two feet deep, while mine goes further than any of us could know. A lot of us are just now getting life jackets when we drowned a long time ago. But this is what happens when you try to give the tools of the privilege without ever seeing the village. My answer isn't your answer, and yours isn't mine. Aiming for equality without practicing equity has been a mistake we've made time after time. I've seen the strongest minds break from all the weight on their spine. I've seen doctors, engineers, and world leaders never get their time, heads in the clouds, just waiting for a sign. But we got the same opportunities, right? Wrong. We may play the same chords, but it is not the same song. It's my song. I had to play on my own, with no training, a broken instrument, and no way to practice at home. We simply learn to survive and find our own way, because it's all we've ever known. But make no mistake, this is wrong. Equity, it can be created. YWCA Greater Cincinnati believes in empowering women to achieve economic self-sufficiency through education. Scholarships have proven to be a successful way to help women attain their educational goals and secure employment and financial stability. YWCA has been a special partner to the Charlotte R. Schmidlap Fund, Fifth Third Bank trustee since 1919. The fund was established in 1908 by Jacob Schmidlap to honor the memory of his daughter, Charlotte. 
Charlotte Schmidlap was tragically killed in an automobile accident and, in response, Jacob wanted to empower women and girls to be self-sufficient, something he had hoped for Charlotte. This YWCA scholarship benefits a client who found success with a YWCA program and is looking for a chance to advance their careers. We are pleased to announce Kate Kinman as the recipient of the 2022 Charlotte R. Schmidlap Scholarship. My name is Kate Kinman. I am a single mother of a beautiful little girl named Charlotte. She's seven months old. She's absolutely my world. I grew up in Harrison. I was the daughter of a single mother and she remarried and I got my stepdad and my two stepsisters. And I had a really great childhood. In 2003, I graduated from Harrison High School and I did really well in school. I went to Cincinnati State and I became a, an acquirer of elective credits but I can't place that into a degree. The only thing I ever thought about was being a mom. When I was in my 20s, I fell into a series of really bad codependent relationships. It took two years to acknowledge that I was the victim of domestic violence because I didn't have bruises. I didn't have a black eye. He would convince me that I was wrong, I was crazy, I was losing my mind. My pivotal moment came on Thanksgiving of last year. There was just this overwhelming feeling that I could not go back to my situation. And a friend gave me a phone number to call, and it was the YWCA. I was in a hotel a couple hours later. It was the most incredible free feeling, and I knew I was safe. About two and a half weeks later, I found out I was pregnant. If I hadn't been for the YWCA, I would have gone back. That moment changed everything. I want women to know that it isn't just another social service program that, that's in and out. You can actually get away from a bad situation. Kate is a champion. She is very strong. Kate is a prime example of if you get the help you need, the hand up, not the hand out. It took me months after being in the YWCA program to come off of that survival mode. My oldest son, Evan, is 12 years old. He lives with my mom, my best friend again. I also have an 18-month-old son, John, and he is being adopted by his foster family. That was actually my decision. I knew in my heart of hearts that that's where he belonged. After having Charlotte, I started to research different careers and a friend suggested the medical billing and coding field. After I graduate from Penn Foster, I would be able to use their job match program that will allow me to work from home I am so proud of Kate, and I believe that she'll be a success because she wants it. When Sunny told me about the Charlotte R. Smith Lab Scholarship, I was like, yeah, right, they'll never pick me. This is gonna enable me to completely focus on school and my daughter. I wanna thank the YWCA from the bottom of my heart. I owe them everything. Congratulations, Kate, and what a great coincidence that your daughter, Charlotte, carries the name of the person honored by this scholarship. We wish you and Charlotte continued success. Meeting Kate is reflective of one more reason that the programs and services of the YWCA have an impact. So be sure to take out your phone and use Alta Fiber's text to give. Just send a text message to the number 91999 and type in the message equity. Then click the link to fulfill your pledge. As we saw in Kate's story, the YWCA shelters provide survivors of domestic violence a life-saving option by offering them a safe place to heal and rebuild. When the pandemic hit, it really caused all of our programs to have to go virtual. And we've been doing that successfully, but it has been challenging for us. The biggest impact was in our shelters. When COVID hit, we could not allow people to live in congregate living. In congregate living, people share bathrooms, bedrooms, kitchen space, social space, and it was impossible, especially with children who couldn't be vaccinated. So we had to move everyone to area hotels. The hotels, first of all, have been very costly. At the maximum of the pandemic, we were paying over $85,000 per month. But it's also taken a cost on our staff and our clients because it's been really challenging to serve people in hotels, getting them diapers, getting them strollers, getting them other things that they may need. Food, we're feeding, they're taking food to them every day. 
We have found an apartment building in Avondale where each individual or family will have their own apartment with their own space, which is a safe haven from abuse. Welcome to the new YWCA Domestic Violence Shelter. The treatment models have shifted over the years, and what this shelter does is provide best practices model for providing those services today. This building provides an opportunity for people to live a life that's as close to normal as possible while being in shelter and being safe from their abusers. You will find living room furniture, you will find a television, you will find places for people to take a nap or to read a book, to relax, all of those things being incredibly important to the healing process, to have time and the ability to choose when you wanna be social. Safety is always a huge concern. What this building allows us to do is really think about safety in very targeted ways, not only for people who are fleeing domestic violence, feeling like this is a place that they can be both safe and welcome, but also for volunteers. You know, there's a human element to safety, and so each resident will have an individual safety plan. And so that's what we really try to remember is that it's not a, you know, one size fits all, but we're really trying to um, provide kind of wraparound thinking about safety. The goal is that this feels like coming to a nice apartment or nice hotel, something where, again, feels safe and secure, but also beautiful. The fact that it's not a secret means that we can put some of our most lovely spaces in places they can be enjoyed by residents and the neighbors. You know, those are things that you just can't do when you're trying to hide. It provides better access, again, to connections with neighborhood organizations, you know, people who are incredibly supportive of the YWCA's programming and really want to know how they can help this be a true success as an entity in the neighborhood. This is groundbreaking for us, and we are, we are charging forth and uh, going forward with this because our board is in support and we know it's the right thing to do. Wow, your thoughtful approach to providing a home-like environment for survivors needing emergency shelters is truly changing lives. You can help YWCA by donating through Alta Fiber's text to give. Just text to the number 91999 and type in the message equity. Then click the link to fulfill your pledge. Here are five important ways your gift can make an impact right now. $35 transport to survivor and her children to the shelter. $50 feeds one family for one day. $75 provides an advocate for three hours of court appointments. $150 provides basic furnishings for one apartment. $350 provides comprehensive shelter services for a family of four. The time is now. You can provide protection and empower those experiencing domestic violence by donating to the YWCA. And that can be at the top of your list. Here to kick off the introduction of the 2022 Career Women of Achievement are the co-chairs of this event, Jody Geyser and Deborah Gentry Davis. Good evening. Thanks, Christina. Deborah and I are thrilled to be part of this special broadcast. We'd love for you to share this evening with all your friends at hashtag on a mission and throughout the year at either hashtag on a mission or through our handle at YWCA Cincinnati. You can also challenge friends to participate with our Alta Fiber text to give opportunity. The theme of creating equity is so appropriate today. The YWCA has been fighting for equity in the workplace from its beginnings. But sadly, we aren't there yet. There is still a wage gap. Women only earn an average of 82 cents for every dollar earned by men. And the wage gap is even greater for most women of color. The pandemic took a huge toll on working women. There are at least 4.5 million fewer women employed now than at the start of the pandemic, resulting in the lowest employment rate for women in over 30 years. The loss of promotions, training, and opportunities are a recipe for a lifetime of lower wages. Tonight, we celebrate women who, in spite of these tough odds, have excelled to become the most influential women in their fields. Throughout their careers, they have earned the respect of their coworkers, driven progress, and forged a path for women coming behind them. Since 1980, the YWCA has honored 338 outstanding women who are now members of the Academy of Career Women of Achievement. And tonight's honorees will become part of that same illustrious academy. 
We are thrilled and excited to introduce you to these eight great achievers who were chosen by an independent panel from a large number of nominees throughout the region. Our first two honorees, Nerissa Morris and Melissa Stevens. I'm Nerissa Morris, Senior Vice President and Chief Human Resources and Chief Diversity Officer at Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Center. We have over 16,000 employees and I'm responsible for a budget of over $325 million. A portion of my childhood was spent here in Cincinnati where my father was a pastor. My mother actually cared for us while he was in school. I have two brothers and we've been guided by values of service, integrity, and hard work and really being the best at what you do. When we left Cincinnati, we moved to a small community in Virginia near the Chesapeake Bay. I graduated from high school and then returned to Cincinnati to go to Xavier. I got my bachelor's degree in industrial relations and went to work for Kenner Toys. Once I received my master's, I was recruited to Ford Motor Company in Nashville, Tennessee. Eventually moved to Sweden, Brazil, and then back to Michigan. And in total, 22 years in the automotive business. It was a challenge changing industries from the corporate mindset into the University of Miami and now Cincinnati Children's. I'd like to say I had this grand plan, but I really leveraged opportunity and just worked hard. As early as you can develop healthy life habits, identify strong core values and live by them. Be willing to explore and experiment. Be a constant learner. Be prepared to say yes to more things than you say no to, because we will have to reinvent ourselves. That's the way of work today. The YWCA mantra of lift as you climb is really important because others have lifted me. But don't lift alone. You lift you reach back, you hold up. I have been incredibly blessed in my career. I am single here in Cincinnati. It's me and my lovely cat, Jefferson. I also have four amazing godchildren and a host of nieces and nephews. Being recognized as a YWCA Career Woman of Achievement is just a tremendous honor. I never thought growing up in Reedville, Virginia, that I would end up in a truly global career. It's just been an amazing journey. I'm Melissa Stevens, the Chief Digital Officer and Head of Digital and Marketing for Fifth Third Bank, serving more than 15 different states across the Midwest and the Southeast. I grew up in Minneapolis believing that I could do anything I wanted to do and be anyone that I wanted to be. I played a lot of sports and all I dreamed of was growing up, working in business and being part of a team. My family experimented with a lot of new technologies. We had every device you could imagine before it was actually mainstream. I had no idea that that would later lead me to a life that was filled with driving innovation, transformation and all things digital. And frankly, I'm a nerd in the best sense of the word. After I graduated from high school, I went to Kalamazoo College. From there, I went to Michigan State University, where I have a master's degree while living in New York. I went to get my MBA at Stern School of Business. Once I got that, it was my entree into business. I worked for my first employer in corporate America, Citigroup, for almost 18 years, living in short stints in both Sao Paulo, Brazil, and Barcelona, Spain. I also worked globally for them, headquartered out of New York City, in 2016, we decided as a family, it was time for our next adventure. So we came to Fifth Third Bank. My best advice for women in 2022, sell yourself like crazy as the person who's gonna do it better than anybody else, and then leap with both feet and work as hard as humanly possible to be successful. Your attitude and your aptitude can get you further than you think. The YDCA mantra of lift as we climb, it resonates for me. You don't need to rise to a certain place, take your stiletto heel and push the other one down. You have to lift people as you rise. It's not about being upset about something called the old boys club. It's about forming the new girls club. 
My husband Ben and I have been together since college. We have three totally rock star children that we're super, super proud of, Will, MJ, and Leo. They frankly keep me humble. Being honored as a YWCA career woman of achievement is frankly one of the most humbling experiences in my corporate career. And I'm excited, I'm inspired. I feel an even greater obligation to do more. So I try to put on a smile, suck up all the energy I have and just go out there and have a blast. To Narissa and Melissa, you bring strength to our community and brighten the lives of so many. The YWCA is delighted to welcome you into the career Women of Achievement family. We'll be right back after this message from one of our innovation partners. As a Main Street bank, PNC has helped over 7 million kids develop their passion for learning through our Grow Up Great initiative. And now we're providing billions of dollars for affordable home lending programs as part of 88 billion to support underserved communities, including loans for small businesses in low and moderate income areas. So everyone has a chance to move forward financially. PNC Bank, see how we can make a difference for you. The YWCA has a long history of supporting women in their careers and celebrating their successes. Companies that partner with the Career Women of Achievement event are sending a strong message of encouragement and support for women in the workplace. They are standing with the YWCA in its mission to empower women. On behalf of the entire YWCA board and staff, I want to thank all of our partners for their generous support for this year's event. A special thanks goes out to our transformation partner, the Charlotte R. Schmidlap Fund, Fifth Third Bank Trustee, and our technology and broadcast partner, Alta Fiber. We deeply appreciate your investment. To our innovation partners, PNC Bank, RIA Money Transfer, WCPO9, and Western and Southern Financial Group. Thanks to each of you. Our leadership partners are always the Christ Hospital Health Network, Cincinnati Business Courier, Cintas, Clark Schaefer Hackett, D.E. Fox & Associates, Fifth Third Bank, Huntington Bank, Kemba Credit Union, Madison Design, and the Procter & Gamble Company. Thank you all for your support of the YWCA. Now, let's meet two more outstanding career women of achievement. Introducing Chandra Matthews Smith and Jennifer Davis. I am Chandra Matthew Smith, Chief Community Engagement Officer for the United Way of Greater Cincinnati. I was born and raised in Muskegon, Michigan. My parents were great, cared for a lot of children uh, in my day. I attended Michigan State University for undergrad and graduate school. My major was social work and psychology. I had the opportunity to become a volunteer tutor, and that started off my journey in social work. I was hired as a supervisor of a therapeutic foster care program and then I fell in love. Terry and I got married and moved to Cincinnati in 1990. I was not gonna work for about six months, stayed in my apartment for about two weeks and was totally bored. So I contacted Beach Acres Parenting Center and started to volunteer there. I was hired as their therapeutic emergency foster care director. I was there for 21 years in various roles. In 2011, I transitioned to be a stay-at-home mom. My husband and I owned a DJ company, and I started a cleaning company with my business partner. I returned to the social services field, uh, to Job and Family Services. When Maura Weir transitioned to the United Way, she contacted me about the community engagement position, and my career flourished. I leave with my heart and with my passion. It's important for me to be counted on to walk the talk. Giving back is in my DNA. Once that adrenaline starts to flow, that's when you know that you can be very successful. My husband Terrence and I have one biological child together. She's 21. 
We raised three other children and we were gifted with three beautiful grandchildren. They live in our home. I would like to give a huge shout out to the YWCA. They work to empower women every single day. To be recognized by your peers is one of the most humbling experiences in my career. My name is Jennifer Davis. I'm the president of Global Feminine Care at Procter & Gamble, a multi-billion dollar business with operations in over 100 countries and an amazing team of employees around the world. I grew up in Northern New Jersey and I always thought I'd have some sort of career in the social sciences or academia. I really never envisioned myself in the business world, but it's certainly inspiring. In high school, I played a lot of sports and uh, I learned so many incredible leadership lessons from being a captain of a team. I went to Princeton University and I majored in politics. And I spent a summer interning in Washington, D.C. and learned that wasn't for me. I got to work for Procter & Gamble and I thought it would just be a summer job. But when I was offered to return after graduation, I figured I would do it for a couple of years my very first job was to go into grocery stores in New York. I often chased the manager down the aisle to try to convince him to put up a display of my products. I learned how to find my voice as a young woman in the early 90s in a very male-dominated industry. And I learned the value of, you know, failing over and over again. I never thought I would be at Procter & Gamble 29 years, but I realized that's really important to stay in touch with what purpose does my career serve in the rest of my life? My role is really less about knowing it all, but about asking the right questions. My advice to women is to not be intimidated by your lack of experience. Never get distracted by perfectionism. And once I let go of that, it became so much easier to focus on what was most important in my life. I feel so inspired to work on the feminine care business at Procter & Gamble, to build girls' confidence at puberty through every single stage of her life. I've been married to my husband, Jeff, for 25 years, and he's an amazing father to our three now adult children. They keep me grounded and they inspire me to want to do good in the world. I want to thank the YWCA for their mission to really support women. I remind myself to be grateful every day. Chandra and Jennifer offer two more varied and inspiring stories. We celebrate you as career women of achievement. And we're excited to announce that Jennifer has recently been appointed the Chief Executive Officer of Healthcare at PNG. Congratulations as you continue on your career journey. Now here's another example of the YWCA creating equity. For years, a harsh disciplinary practice has been implemented in schools across the country. It is a practice of rigid, predetermined punishments that funnel students out of the classroom and significantly hinders their potential for long-term success. It is a practice that disproportionately impacts minorities and often leads to suspensions, expulsions, or students dropping out of school. It is a practice that is twice as likely to impact girls of color than boys of color. Dedicated to addressing these disparities, the YWCA Greater Cincinnati partnered with Colerain Township's Northwest Local School District to launch Peaceful Solutions, a restorative practices program. Equity for Northwest is really about making sure that 
all staff and students have what they need when they need it and how they need it, and that's different for every person. Peaceful Solutions is really all about building community, and we do that through working on relationships. When I was approached about the Peaceful Solutions, I was skeptical. As a teacher, there are lots of things that we do that take our time away from educating. And so I was worried this was going to ultimately cause less instructional minutes. What I found though is that it increased the instructional minutes and the instructional minutes were more focused and valuable. There's no bad kids. There's good kids who make bad choices. And just like with our restorative practice, there's still the behaviors. Our goal is to be able to address those behaviors in a manner that is appropriate in a school setting. And through this partnership with Peaceful Solutions, our students are not only learning skills and strategies that keep them in school and in class, but make them support better relationships with their peers, with other adults, both inside and outside the school. That's really why we do these circles, so you have an opportunity to share your voice. I tell circles at the beginning, my only rule is that we respect one another. We're really focused on making sure that we're listening to each other, and the reason we want you to listen is because you're going to gain knowledge from one another. Restorative circles have been wonderful. This activity helped with confidence, honesty, respect for the other students when they're talking or engaging or participating. It was just more respectful, more sense of community. Your behavior has an impact on one another in this classroom. We're reinforcing those positive behaviors and positive choices that those students are making. And the more that you feel good about yourself, the more that you feel proud of positive behaviors, it just a domino effect. And we just continue to see more positive outcomes. I truly believe every student wants to be successful. With the small groups, whatever topic it is that that child is struggling with, there's other kids at the school that are also struggling in that area. So we're able to work together and really focus on certain behaviors that we want to see address and change, and then we can start seeing that progress. One of my most favorite things that I saw change is students being able to manage their own feelings and frustrations. So they could go to the break station and take a moment. They could squeeze a ball. They could draw a picture. They could just get out their frustrations in a healthy way. I can see their shoulders start to relax. They do feel empowered while going through the frustration and it propels them to feel more confident, to keep going and to believe in themselves. A lot of times behaviors don't need to necessarily be met with consequences. They need to be met with a reaction. And that reaction doesn't have to be a negative. Sometimes things just get a little bit overwhelming. And what we see with the one-on-one -on -one instructions and discussion is that sometimes the kid just needs that little break. But if you start getting frustrated or upset in the classroom, what can you do? I put my head down and take deep breaths. We strategically and intentionally chose to put peaceful solutions in our elementary schools so that we truly can build that strong foundation for our students so as they continue to grow and develop, they can utilize these skills throughout their entire educational experience. We are seeing that the influence of peaceful solutions in our building is complementing the culture, helping reduce discipline referrals for students, and keeping them in class, which in class time for students is always gonna result in more learning. Procter & Gamble's Take on Race initiative started taking a look at our Peaceful Solutions program and how they might partner with us to add an extra layer. This school year, we have been doing some work with a look at implicit bias and take a look at some of those equity issues and how they may or may not be impacting their schools. And so Take on Race has supported our ability to engage an outside entity to help us do an evaluation and knows how to best show the successes of the program in order to be able to replicate it, you know, not just within Cincinnati, but in other areas across the country. This isn't a program for kids who are in trouble. This isn't a program for kids who need extra attention. This is a program for everyone. If the YWCA had unlimited financial resources, we would have peaceful solutions in every school in our greater Cincinnati area because the impact could 
really change the way our communities relate to one another. I want to personally thank the YWCA for the Peaceful Solutions Program. I think it's valuable. It's added so much to our school community. It's helped build a culture of positives and empowerment in our students and in our staff. Supporting youth programs like Peaceful Solutions creates a positive and equitable school culture and ultimately changes the future of all children. And this change starts with you. So please, if you haven't done so already, take out your phone and help make an impact. Just send a text message to the number 91999 and type in the message equity. Then click the link to fulfill your pledge. Our next honorees impact our community in many ways. Meet Kristen Hall Weavers and Regina Carswell Russo. I'm Kristen Hall Weavers, Senior Vice President and Chief Marketing and Communications Officer at UC Health. I lead a wonderful team of 40 people and I manage an operating budget of about $14 million. I grew up outside of Philadelphia. I had a wonderful childhood. My mother and father are still alive. They just turned 90 this year. When I was in fifth grade gym class, I was the first girl to climb the ropes and touch the ceiling. But I wanted people to be with me as I was climbing. It was an incredible life lesson. I went to high school in Wilmington, Delaware. I went to college in Ohio at Denison University. I majored in biology and minored in phys ed because I thought I wanted to be a physician. By the time I finished my honors classes, I had been offered a job at Procter & Gamble. So I called my mom and dad and said, Mom, do you mind if I sell toilet paper instead of going to medical school? I left P&G after 17 years and I had planned to take about six months off. Well, it turned into two years. But I decided to go back to work, and it was my mentor, Bob Whaling, who said, you should talk to Messer Construction. And I said, but I don't know construction. He said, but your skills are transferable. I was open to change. I was curious and willing to be vulnerable. It's part of my DNA. I decided to move into healthcare and I joined Mercy Health. And then while I've been working full time, I decided to go earn my MBA and earn my doctorate from Xavier University. As the first woman to join the executive team at UC Health, I think it's important not to tell people what to do, but help them find their way. That's joyous, that, that's satisfying. It's vital that we say what we do and do what we say in terms of diversity and inclusion and equity and access. You see health. I think we can all be inspired by the absolute steadfast resilience of the YWCA to recognize and honor women in this community throughout the pandemic. I'm completely humbled, but I'm also inspired to do more. I'm Regina Carswell Russo, founder and CEO of Right Now Communications, a strategic communications agency. I grew up in Detroit. Yep, Motown, Motor City. I come from a very big family. And when I was a young girl, I wanted to be a professional communicator. My mom would make me watch the news and I was so captivated by how they made people open up. I was amazed by that and I wanted it. I went to Purdue University and I majored in radio and television broadcasting. My first job was at a radio station in Detroit. 
owned by an African-American woman, Martha Jean Steinberg. She was a legend. I learned you can be a businesswoman and the artist. After three years, she was pushing me to be bigger and better and to explore and to find my own voice. It was the hardest lesson. <laughs> it was the hardest lesson I had to learn. So then I went to Grand Rapids. I was the only uh, person of color and then uh, got my first television job in Lansing, Michigan. I came to Cincinnati and I worked at Fox 19 for about 15 years and I loved it, but I was getting tired of doing all the crime. So I created What's Hot with Regina and it took off. That's what's hot right now. I was living the life that I had dreamt. I met my husband, Matt, and it changed the trajectory of my life. It was scary. I had children at an older age, and so I was looking for work-life integration. I worked at the Cincinnati Art Museum and the Contemporary Art Center. I realized I needed to be a stay-at-home mom. And so I found it right now, communications. When I counsel other women, I always tell them there are no mistakes in life. There are decisions. All women have a level of influence to lift as they climb and to use their voice. I'm here to tell you there's many different pathways and be open to it. It is a privilege to embrace this honor. It comes with responsibility to do more. I am literally living my best life right now. Ladies, like all of our honorees, you've achieved extraordinary accomplishments throughout your careers. Tonight, we celebrate you. And now, it's our distinct honor to recognize and celebrate the 30th anniversary of the Mamie Earl Sells Scholarship. Over the past 30 years, the Mamie Earl Sell Scholarship has helped hundreds of young Black women in their senior year of high school go on to college. Throughout high school, each has succeeded academically, participated in extracurricular activities, and contributed to their community despite facing significant hardships. I was a recipient of the Mamie Earl Sell Scholarship Award in 2013 I went on to Duke University getting my bachelor's in psychology. I'm now an admissions counselor in the Office of Undergraduate Admissions at the University of Cincinnati. Being able to be a part of the heritage of the May Merrill Sell Scholarship Award, it makes me feel honored. It makes me feel very lucky that people were able to look at me and see that, you know, I was special. I received the Mammy Earl Sell Scholarship in 2012. I graduated from the University of Cincinnati with a Bachelor's of Science degree in Information Technology. I'm using that degree today as a digital web manager. So Mammy Earl Sells, um, she was very passionate about lifting as you climb. That's not just a mantra to me, it's something that I try to live every day. Recently, I uh, adopted my nephew, I believe that I'm lifting him up as I continue to climb and pursue my dreams. I can't believe it's 30 years, but I also can't believe it's been 10 years since I won. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> Hello, my name is Marsha Lynn Sells, and I'm the proud daughter of Mamie Earl Sells. And I'm incredibly excited to be here today for the Career Women of Achievement Awards and for the honoring of the Mamie Earl Sell Scholarship Awardee. It was a brief conversation with Charlene Ventura, then the Executive Director for the YWCA in 1992, asking our family if we would be willing to let my mom's name be part of this program. Of course, we said yes right away. And now here we are, 30 years later, still celebrating and lifting up young women's accomplishments. Thank you to the YWCA of Cincinnati for continuing this legacy for 30 years. I'm excited to also salute the newest member of the Mamie Earl Sells Scholarship Award family, Tyasia Person from Hughes High School. 
I'm Taija Person, a senior at Houston High School in the engineering pathway. I grew up in Cincinnati. I have a brother and I have a little sister. My childhood, it was kind of like a little rough because my mom, she had me at a young age. And then my father, he was in jail until I was 13 years old. When I was two years old, I moved in with my grandmother because we lost our house. I came to Houston High School when I was in the ninth grade. I have known Tyasia for two years. So Tyasia is one of our top students that we have here. She has a 4.38 GPA. When you first meet her, she's very quiet, but she has an inner fire. It's a beautiful explosion of her personality. I love that we have my engineering pathway classes. One was a go-kart class, and then this year is robotics. I'm going to do an internship at Cincinnati Children's this summer about biomedical engineering. I'm in the National Honor Society. I've been on the varsity track team and cheer team for four years. In my junior year, um, I applied for the Cincinnati Police Cadet and got the job. Tyasia is a great leader. She's an advocate, especially if there's some type of injustice. She knows how to fight for what she wants. She doesn't take no for an answer. She'll hear your no, but she's already got 10 plans on how to combat your no. When my grandmother, Linda, passed away in 2019 from cancer, I was angry and sad because she was my best friend. That caused me to have a pivotal moment in my life. After I get my degree in biomedical engineering, I planned on starting a fund in my grandmother's name because we need more women in engineering. Lift that you climb means to me that you should just keep going and don't look back. I feel like I got what it takes to have a successful career. I really want to thank the YWCA for the Mamie Earl Searle Scholarship because it meant a lot in my heart. I just want to give them hugs. Congratulations, Taisha, and welcome to the Mamie Earl Searle's family of scholars. We wish you continued success as you start college in the fall. We hope you have learned more about the significant impact the YWCA has on our community. Join us by supporting the Alta Fiber Text to Give. Text to 91999, type the word equity, and then click the link to fulfill your pledge. Our final two honorees are no exception to career success. Meet Jean Shore and Elizabeth Pierce. My name is Jean Schroer. I've been the president and CEO of the Catalytic Fund of Northern Kentucky since its inception in 2008. Hello, this is Jean. I grew up in Mount Airy. I was the youngest of four girls. I thought I might be a librarian, but because I was so interested in cities, I decided to go to UC and got my degree in urban design. And then I immediately got my MBA in finance and real estate at Indiana University. And that really led to the career I have today. After I spent two years in Chicago with a very large real estate development company, I moved back home to Cincinnati. And I worked at Corporax for five years. And then I had my two daughters. The real estate development industry is a, is a 24 seven job. And I intended to be a stay-at-home mom. However, I taught at UC as a field instructor, and I went back to Corporex until Bill Butler and Chuck Shepard asked me to take on the challenge of creating the Catalytic Fund. One of my most challenging projects was acquiring financing for River Center, the first office building constructed in Covington in 50 years. It took us four years to create the $10 million fund that we needed to start. I love doing those things that people say are difficult, if not impossible to do. I, I thrive on challenge. I really love teaching the young people. I hope I'm a role model for women in commercial real estate. I believe that females in business 
can have it all, though not simultaneously. There is no such thing as getting rich quick, and it requires a huge amount of work ethic, patience, and time. I have a tremendous amount of support. I married um, my husband, Michael, and now we have a great blended family. I'm especially grateful to, to the YWCA for recognizing a Northern Kentuckian as a recipient of this award. My career has exceeded what I ever dreamt it could be. I've been the luckiest person in the world. My name is Elizabeth Pierce. I'm the president and CEO of Cincinnati Museum Center. I oversee a budget of about $20 million on an annual basis. We live inside a beautiful historic landmark. I grew up in Mansfield, Ohio, and really liked history. My family visited every historic site one could find in the state of Ohio, and I always knew that that was something I wanted to do. I went to Miami University in Oxford, Ohio. I studied history and geography. I did the European program in Luxembourg and pursued graduate studies at George Washington University in museum administration. My first job in the museum field was at the Chicago Children's Museum as a fundraising associate. After moving to Cincinnati with my husband in fall of 1999, I made a career pivot to work in public relations and the museum became one of my clients. And that's how I came back into the museum field. I joined Cincinnati Museum Center in 2007 with a very clear mandate that we needed the community to appreciate the value of this organization and the value of this building. So the accomplishment of passing the 2014 sales tax with 62% of the vote is absolutely a highlight of my career. We did a massive restoration of $228 million to put this beautiful building back into service for generations to come. And it has been a rocket ship ride since then. I like to work with a lot of energy. I love to connect the dots. I see always a big picture and then I begin to figure out how we can make connections and relationships and work deeper and stronger and I jokingly say to folks, oh, I'm having ideas. And um, thankfully they embrace that and, and don't run too far away from it. My husband, Brad, and my two boys, Cooper and Graham, have been incredibly supportive of my role here at the museum. I think I have the best job in the world. I get to play with dinosaurs, trains. I am learning something new every day. Gives me chills. It's an incredible place to be right now. To be recognized as a career woman of achievement is unbelievable. It's very humbling. It's beyond expectation. Congratulations to all of the 2022 Career Women of Achievement. We are extremely proud to have you join the 338 women who have been recognized by the Academy of Career Women of Achievement. And we're grateful for your impact on the business community and the broader community you've helped to make more inclusive. Tonight's theme of creating equity is so important. The YWCA has been fighting for equity from its beginnings, and with your support, we'll continue to fight with you until we achieve our mission. Equity to me means that I have to personally start with individuals where they are. Understanding what individuals particularly need, and that we recognize those differences in people, ensuring that every person has equal opportunity to succeed, and that we should be working collectively to overcome barriers. Understanding the stories of our past, and then think about how they can make a difference as we go forward. You have to look at the systems that are at work, and whether or not those systems are in fact designed to deliver what is equitable, what is fair, what is right. I believe that economic equity is the ability to access capital based on your ability and not just based on the amount of wealth you already have or the connections you already have. Equity has a lot of just discomfort because it's not just feelings, it's experiences, it's history. It really takes extreme vulnerability. 
And the beauty of it is when we listen, we see, we hear, and we embrace the uniqueness and the differences of everyone around us, we start to recognize and notice the universal truths that lie just beneath the surface. We need more people that don't make us feel hopeless. We need more people that make us feel like we can pass life's test. More people that know our reaction to oppression won't go away unless addressed and provide us safe places where we can get that off our chest. You add in a sense of community and I promise we can do the rest because who really doesn't want to be at their best? To live through poverty, racism and inequality is to forever work with the cards we've been dealt. But I've never forgotten a person who showed me they cared about the way I felt and I've always held love for anyone who gave me help. So imagine, what can happen when a group of people dedicate their time to helping you slay your dragons? When you finally start to find your way back and you become the person you never had? It sounds like an introduction to magic. The YWCA isn't an organization, it's a movement. A testament to everything women have already been doing and a bold statement that we ain't moving. Equity now. Thank you so much for being with us this evening to truly celebrate groundbreaking women who through their leadership and commitment to equity inspire us all. The texts to give donations have been rising and we thank you so much for your support. A reminder to send a text message to 91999 and type in the message equity, then click the link to fulfill your pledge. We trust you've been inspired by our honorees, our scholars, and most of all by the many programs and services that YWCA Greater Cincinnati provides every day to build a better, stronger, and more equitable community. For more information about all of the great work the YWCA is doing, please go to ywcacincinnati.org. And please join us next year for the YWCA 2023 Career Women of Achievement Celebration. Have a great night, everyone.